All right, so in this video, we're going to continue looking at solving equations with several occurrences of the variable, meaning we see the variable more than one time within the equation. We have to simplify that. And we can see they're getting a little bit more complex. There's more going on here that we have to simplify first. And then we're also going to look at how to clear fractions um, to make it easier to simplify and solve our problem. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this first one. So this is going to require distribution because we have our parentheses. So remember, you're always using PEMDAS to simplify. So parentheses, then exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So we don't have any exponents, but we do have parentheses. And in order to do this, I'm going to multiply or distribute this negative 8 to everything inside of the parentheses, so every single term. So I'm going to have negative 3y minus 2, because I haven't done anything on this side of the equal sign. But negative 8 times y is negative 8y. Negative 8 times 4 is negative 32. So now that I've distributed, um, I want to make sure that you know both sides are simplified, and then I can start solving. So there's nothing more I can simplify here. I can't combine negative 3 and negative 2 because negative 3 is being multiplied and negative 2 is not. Um, and then same thing with negative 8 and negative 32. Negative 8 is being multiplied, but negative 32 is not. And again, this goes back to PEMDAS. I cannot jump to addition subtraction before multiplication division. So the rule says I need to know what y is, and I have to multiply this by negative 8 before I can subtract negative 32 from it. I have to do the multiplication first. So that's the same reason with the negative 3 and the negative 2. I have to do the multiplication before I can jump to the subtraction. Okay? So because I can't simplify anymore, I can start solving. And the main goal of solving is we want to get y all by itself on one side of the equal sign. So let's bring all of the variables to one side and all the constants to the other side. Okay, So I have negative 3y and negative 8y. So I want to do the opposite of 1, and I'm always trying to aim for a positive number if I can. So if I add 8y to both sides because that is the opposite of negative 8, like this. And remember what that does, and I'll change the color on this one. We want to do the same thing to both sides of that equal sign to keep it balanced. So if I add 8y to the right side, I have to add 8y to the left side. Negative 3 plus y, and we can look at some algebra tiles for this one really quick. So we have negative 3 and positive y. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and these are positives. And we may have um, some actual algebra tiles in the center. It kind of depends on which center you're in. But most of the centers do have actual algebra tiles, but it's very easy to draw as well. So they cancel one to one, one negative to one positive. I can cancel them out. They go away like that, and I just look at what's left over. So there's positive 5 left over. So we have positive 5y minus 2 equals negative 8, positive 8. So that, that would be the same kind of thing with the algebra tiles. I would have 8 negatives. I'd have 8 positives. They would completely cancel out. There would be nothing left over. So they go to 0. They go away. So then I have negative 32 that drops down. All right, so now all my variables are on one side, and I need to bring all these constants, which are just the numbers, not being multiplied or divided. I want to bring all those to the other side. Um, so the other way I explain that, too, is when we're starting to solve, I want to look at addition subtraction first. And you can actually use PEMDAS a little bit for this. So when I'm simplifying, I go from left to right. When I'm solving, uh, let's see, I'll use bright green. I actually kind of can turn the corner here and go backwards. This is the solving process. But I should pretty much stop after multiplication. Every once in a while we do have an exponent we have to deal with, but that's a little later. So we do addition subtraction first when we're solving, then multiplication division. Just kind of a little way to help you remember. So simplify and then turn the corner and start solving. So I'm subtracting 2 from both sides, so I'm going to add because that's the opposite. That's what will undo the subtraction of 2. So I have 5y equals, because negative 2, positive 2, that's the same thing with the algebra tiles. If I had negative 2 and positive 2, they would completely cancel out. So negative 32 plus 2 
Think of this as subtraction. 32 minus 2 is 30, and negative um, 32 is definitely bigger or more numbers than just 2. So it's negative 30. So this one would be a little tedious to draw out 30 of them, but you could if you wanted to. Um, definitely possible, because you could even do something like 10 tiles like this, and just um, and you could do them red or yellow, depending. But I could say I have negative 30 like this. These are 10, and then I have 2 like that. So a pretty easy way to draw 30 if I really wanted to draw it that way. You don't have to draw individual 30 pieces. All right, so now I have 5 times y equals negative 30. I want to undo that multiplication. So the opposite multiplication is division. 5 divided by 5, any number divided by itself is 1. So I have y equals negative 30 divided by 5. A negative divided by positive is going to be a negative. So now I can focus on the numbers. 30 divided by 5 is 6. Don't forget to go back and check your answers. So we have negative 3 times negative 6. And I'm using this equation here. I'm going back to the original equation. So negative 3 times y. Well, I know y is negative 6. So negative 3 times negative 6 minus 2 equals negative 8 times negative 6 plus 4. So I just filled in the y's with negative 6 here. Okay, So I'm using that original equation. I'm going back. I'm going to check my work to see, did it in fact give me a number that makes both of these sides equal? So when I'm done simplifying this, both sides should equal the same number. So I have negative 3 times negative 6. That's positive 18. A negative times a negative is a positive. Minus 2. And then in here, I can go negative 8, and I can simplify this. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2, because it would be 6 minus 4 is 2. 6 is bigger than 4, and it's negative, so it's a negative 2. So I end up with 18 minus 2 is 16. Negative 8 times negative 2, a negative times a negative is positive. 8 times 2 is 16. So check. We got it right. Yay. Um, all righty. So now, this one's getting a little more complex, like I said at the beginning. Now we not only have multiple occurrences of the variable, but we also have to distribute twice. Because I have a, a parenthesis on both sides of the equal sign there. So I'm going to have to distribute this 2. And I'm also going to have to distribute this negative 3. So I'm going to go ahead and do this at the same time. 6x minus 9 plus 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 times 3 is 6 equals negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. All right, so now we can simplify. This side is all simplified, negative 3x minus 12, but this side definitely has some combinations we can make. So 6x plus 6x is 12x. 6 plus 6 is 12. Negative 9 plus 6 is negative 3 because it's 9 minus 6, which would be 3, but since the 9 is bigger than 6, it means we have more negative, right? Negative 3x minus 12, and that's a negative, not just an extension of the 3. All right, so now we want to start bringing our um, variables together. So I'm going to add 3x to both sides. And you could have subtracted 12 to both sides. It's perfectly fine. I just always aim for a positive if I can. But it doesn't mean that this is the only way. There's any one of the four numbers can kick this off. So I could have moved the 12. I could have moved the 3. This 3x, this 12. Any one of them would have been perfectly fine. So 12x plus 3x gives me 15x minus 3 equals um, these threes cancels. Negative three plus three x, sorry, negative three x plus three x cancels out because they're the exact same number. So just like the algebra tiles up here, I had negative three, now I have positive three. When I combine, they completely cancel each other. So negative 12. Now I'm going to add this three to both sides. And I'll have 15x equals negative three plus three, just like the three x's, these guys cancel also. Negative 12 plus three. That's going to get me negative 9, because it would be 12 minus 3, which is 9. 12 is the bigger number here, or more number. I have to be careful about saying bigger number, but it has more of them. 12 is definitely more than 3, so the 
we would have negatives instead of positives. And then my last step, I'm going to divide by 15 on both sides because I want to undo that multiplication. So I have x equals negative 9 divided by 15. So the main thing here I want to do really quick is I want to simplify because it says simplify your answer as much as possible. So it doesn't want you to leave it um, a fraction like this that can be simplified. Both of these can be divided by 3. So 9 divided by 3 is 3, and it's still negative. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So instead of it being not negative 9 fifteenths, it's going to be negative 3 fifths. Um, and same thing, we can always go back and check our answers and plug these in. The main thing when you're checking your answer is you're checking to see does it actually equal both sides. Okay. So let's see if I go 6 times negative 3 fifths minus 9 plus 2 times oops, 3 times 3 fifths plus 3 equals kind of going sideways here negative 3 times 3 fifths negative plus 4. All right, so we have a whole lot going on here. So this is actually going to be a little easier. And sorry, I know I kind of ran out of room there. This is going to be a little easier to check when I explain clearing fractions in a moment. Because we can clear these fractions out to make it easier to um, basically um, add and subtract all the numbers or solve the, the equation. So we don't have to deal with all the, the fraction um, addition and subtraction specifically. That's kind of the um, more tedious part of fractions. Multiplication of fractions is usually pretty easy. Straight across the top, straight across the bottom, and you're done. But when we're adding and subtracting, they have to be like denominators. Um, so with this one, we can go ahead and kind of start. So um, it would be 6 times negative 3, which would be negative 8. Whenever you're multiplying, you multiply across the top. You're dividing across the bottom like that. And then we'd have minus 9 plus, and this would be 3 times 3. So I'm going to, before I do this, it would be 9 over 5, negative, plus 3 equals, and now we can multiply here. I'd have negative 3 times negative 3, and that would give me positive 9 fifths, plus negative 3 times 4, that would give me negative 12. Um, so now, this is where we can eliminate some fractions. If you notice, they're, they're all fives because we, we, that was part of our answer, right? It was negative 3 fifths. So we have that fifth on the bottom. So if I multiply the entire thing by 5, this is what we call clearing the fractions. And we're going to practice that again on this one. Um, if you multiply everything by 5, what it's going to do is 5 divided by 5 is going to cancel out. And I'm just going to have negative 18. 5 times negative 9 is negative 45. And then with this one, oh, I should have actually distributed that too. So this would be negative 18 and 6. So I apologize. I should have distributed that too. So this one would also cancel out, and I would end up with negative 18. And then positive 30 equals 9 minus 60. So now, all of a sudden, I have a much simpler plan of attack here. All I have to do is combine all of these numbers. Um, so with this one, let's see, this side is, is much easier. It's going to be negative 51 because I just subtract 9 from 60. So this side should very well get me that same answer. So let's make sure we have 45 plus 18 plus 18. I'm going to do this really quick because I'm adding all of the negatives first. So let's see, we're going to have negative 36. So we're going to add these guys. We're going to have 70, 81, negative. And then I'm going to take 30 away from that. So I'd have 51. Oh, look at that. We get negative 51. So it did, in fact, work. Yay! Oh, let me grab the eraser really quick. So we're going to practice that again on this one where it's not quite as involved looking so it's a little easier to see it um, and sometimes we don't have the same number all of these fractions on this one were fives so that was easy I know exactly what to multiply by I, I multiply by five and that's going to get rid of all of my fractions 
Well, this one I have a three, a three, and a two. So what I wanna multiply by is the lowest common multiple of all denominators. And then we're gonna multiply by this LCM, lowest common multiple, and this will clear the fractions, leaving a more manageable equation. And then we can go ahead and solve the remaining equation. So by multiples, what I mean is literally if I count by three, so three, six, nine, 12, 15, and then do the same thing with twos, so that I have two, four, um, eight, sorry, let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, like that. I almost skipped six for some reason. I was doing exponents instead of multiples, silly me. Um, so all I'm looking for is the first time that I have a number that matches in each list. So in this case, it's six. Six is their lowest common multiple. So I can multiply by six like this, and it's gonna, everything gets multiplied, both sides of the equation, every single thing. So when I'm doing this, it's negative four thirds times six. Well, six divided by three is two. Two times negative four is negative eight. And then same thing over here, I'm gonna go, oh, and there's a U there, sorry, I forgot to bring the U down. Six times, um, times negative seven thirds. So same thing here, six divided by three is two. So two times negative seven is negative 14. And then four U, there's nothing to cancel. It's just six times four U, which is 24 U. And then it's gonna be six times one half. Six divided by two is three. Three times one is three, so it's minus three. So I do have to do a little bit of simplification each time when I'm multiplying um, the six in. I have to figure out what is it, how does it simplify, and then multiply what's left over by the top. Okay, so now this looks a whole lot more like what we've been dealing with already. So I'm gonna bring my variables together. And in this case, I have negative eight U on the, the left and positive 24 U on the right. So I'm actually gonna bring the eight U to the right. Um, so far, I think I've always brought it to the left because that's the way it's kind of worked out to stay positive. So negative eight U plus eight U cancels out. 14, negative 14 drops down. 24U plus 8U is 32U minus three. And now I'm gonna add three to both sides because now I wanna start getting U by itself. Now that I've started to simplify this, I wanna keep moving. Negative 14 plus three is negative 11. It's interesting, we're gonna end up with kind of a funky fraction here, but we started with fractions. So it's not necessarily out of the question to end with fractions. Negative three minus, or uh, plus three cancels out. So now I wanna divide by 32. So now I'm gonna have negative 11 divided by positive 32. And I would have done that on both sides. So 32 divided by 32 would have canceled out. Sorry, I don't have enough room to write it underneath there. So I would have just you. And this is as simple as it gets. There is no more simplification for that because 32 does not divide nicely into 11 or 11 does not divide nicely into 32. I said that backwards. Um, so we're just gonna leave it negative 11 over 32. Um, and we can go back and we can actually check this just to make sure that it works. Um, I think it might look a little bit more complicated if I actually go through and do that. So I'm gonna skip that part for now. Um, just because I don't want to overcomplicate it with the number of fractions that we'll have here. Um, but you can definitely go through and plug this in if you wanted to, to see how that would work out. And you can actually plug it into this one with the fractions or that simplified version without the fractions. They're equivalent equations, meaning they're the same equation. All we did was change the entire equation by multiplying by six to get this one down here. So it is in fact the same equation it's just kind of enlarged, but all by the same amount. So it's still the same. Alrighty, so that's solving linear equations with several occurrences of a variable and the beginning of clearing fractions. So go ahead and go on Alex and give that a try.